Hey guys, welcome to the Arzion channel and today I want to show us something a little bit weird and interesting. This was the handheld that I've been using since 2010 uh, for retro gaming and stuff like that and I can tell you it is even smaller than the BitBoy and the LDK game. Yep, that is a Sony Ericsson Xperia Mini Pro. This here used to be a blast to play around with. Uh, it really blows all the other handhelds out of the water, actually, uh, except for the RetroPie handhelds, because it can also play N64 games. And I have a small handy dandy pouch for it. Just wanted to show that off. And you're, you'd be like, yeah, but this is a phone. This is not a retro game console. It doesn't have a gamepad. Whoa, it does have a gamepad, as you can see. Yes, this is a modified uh, handheld that I used to play around with. So I took apart. Let me just show you what I did. It had a keyboard, since this is the Pro version. And you can just pull this up here to see that I removed the keys from the keyboard to be able to uh, use it as a gamepad. So I use a select I remove the select amount of uh, keys with the Zacto knife, and you know, the rest I kept it in there, like the D-pad, as you can see over here is a circular D-pad, and the ABXY buttons, so I can play games on it. You can just map these buttons to the uh, emulator, and it will work flawlessly. Let me show off some gameplay. Here is the N64. Let it load it up. Just take this rupee over here. What I want to show off with this 3D game is that even if these are digital inputs, you can use it as an analog stick quite easily if you have it as a circular D-pad. It doesn't work perfectly, but it used to be good enough for me for 2010, you didn't have anything else that was as good as this for um, an N64 emulation and as small as this. I could just pop it in my bag and take it to school and nobody would ask a question because it looks like a phone. But it isn't. It had all kinds of emulators and games on it. It was loaded to the brim with all that kind of stuff and yeah. Modifying these types of phones was something like I was dreaming of the next phone that I would uh, modify and stuff like that, uh, but it really didn't come to that. Um, all the keyboard phones were, didn't continue on and were discontinued. So there is another YouTuber called The Fox who also used to do stuff like this. Uh, on a Samsung Epic or something like that. I'll leave a video in the description in case you want to check his video out. But you can do this with a lot more uh, different types of phones than you can imagine. Some of them can play Dreamcast, some of them cannot. Some of them have a dual core, some of them don't. This one doesn't have a dual core uh, processor, but it's overclocked as you can see. So yeah, it's not really uh, a problem. I can play N64 games on this one without any issues. Now. Let me just pause it. It works better than any RG350 that there is on the market right now. Uh, that's for sure. And then let's move on to Super Nintendo. We can play some Mega Man X. Has an accelerometer, of course. Gyroscope. And you can get these for very cheap from uh, eBay and stuff like that, like $10 with shipping and all. That's what uh, I found. It depends on your luck actually, because it doesn't always, it isn't always that cheap. Sometimes it even is expensive uh, to get these types of vintage phones and to get your hands on them. And the aspect ratio of this phone is perfect for retro games because it's a 3x4 aspect ratio. So this phone was the best that I could imagine of for retro gaming because I hate stretching and stuff like that. And it used to do everything that I needed it to do. And it is very small. So, and also very comfortable for what it is. It slides open like a PS, uh, 
PlayStation Portable uh, Go, PSP Go. So that was a very nice feature that it had. And you can still do that to this type of phone. I hope some of you guys are able to appreciate what it is and recycling technology and stuff like that and modifying it and how nice that is. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys that are subscribed to my channel are retro game geeks, so I'm pretty sure some of you will appreciate this. Let's move on to some uh, GBA gameplay. And it is flawless compared to uh, other, other uh, user interfaces on the other handhelds such as the retro game RG350 and stuff like that. This one here is a lot better. You can see the difference in size. This one is humongous compared to this one even though it's not that big. But it's humongous compared to what this is. And the other one and the Mini Pro is a lot better than it. Here you have uh, Game Boy Advance. Let's open up some uh, Kirby in the Amazing Mirror. Also, this is not Bluetooth or anything, so you, it, it doesn't have any input lag, unlike uh, what your current Android phones have. A lot of you guys are worried about input lag when I review Bluetooth controllers, so this one doesn't have input lag. Oh, I actually like that one. So, yeah, it's instantaneous and awesome for retro gaming. It's something you still can do, and I recommend to you guys to still check it out if you want to have something very teeny tiny and awesome for retro gaming, then this is the way to go. And it looks uh, not so awkward when you're on the bus or something like that, that you pull out a dedicated handheld for uh, retro gaming. Sometimes that can be awkward. In this case, it looks like a phone, so it's not that awkward. And it is instantaneous as well. The FPS is very well, very good. The screen refresh rate is good as well. Just for the time, this was the best there was. Uh, it's a Game Boy Color, so the colors are kind of whack. There is no button presses in between that I have a problem with. Like for example, if I press here, it just feels solid. Oh, bummer. So let's move on and test out another gameplay. 
PSP games, they work, but not the high-end PSP games. Some of them do work, the 2D ones in specific. Um, drastic uh, used to work just fine. Let me just see if I have anything to show off. So this is a Nintendo DS. Um, it works well, but you cannot use two screens at the same time when you're playing, which is kind of a bummer. Only if you play it like this, then you can do that. But uh, you'll have to use the touch screen, and that's something I don't want to do. But for the rest, it works quite well. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, also will find your own to modify and then have fun with that. Uh, maybe do the same thing. I can leave some links in the description for uh, reused phones and stuff like that if you want to check it out. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a comment, like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.